Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're diving deep into one of the most effective tools for visualizing complex data in Excel, the Meko chart. This powerful chart is also known as the Mary Meko chart, and it helps you visualize the relationship between two categorical variables. Whether you're analyzing market share or comparing multiple segments across different categories, the Meko chart will give you a visual representation that's easy to interpret and incredibly insightful. So let's get started by understanding what exactly a Meko chart is, how it works, and how you can create one in Excel. By the end of this video, you'll be able to build a Meko chart with your own data. So let's jump right in. A Meko chart, sometimes called a Mary Meko chart, is a type of stacked bar chart, but with variable width bars. The width of each bar corresponds to the size or proportion of a specific segment, and the height of each segment reflects the value of that category. This makes it a powerful tool for analyzing both the size of categories and their relative contributions. Let's start by preparing your data. To create a Meko chart, you need a data set that includes categories and their corresponding values. For example, let's say you're analyzing a data set with markets as rows and market shares as columns. Here we have a data set where rows represent different markets, such as North America, Europe, and Asia and the columns represent the market shares of different companies like Company A, Company B, and Company C. This type of data set works perfectly for building a Meko chart because it clearly defines the categories and their respective values. You'll need to ensure that your data is well organized, and we'll use it to build a helper table that will structure the data appropriately for our chart. Now we need to build a helper table. This is an important step because the Meko chart requires a specific data format to work properly in Excel. Here's how we create that helper table. Let's copy the names of each company and paste it here, starting from J2Cell. Nice! The blank column before company A will be later filled with horizontal axis values. This column will contain cumulative percentage values based on market share data we have in the original table. First, we'll leave the first row blank. This will act as a space to organize our calculations. Copy the North America's market share of four companies, D3 to G3, and paste it three times in the table like this. Leave a row blank and copy all company shares of Europe market and paste it three times. Great! Let's quickly repeat the procedure for Asia and Australia market. Make sure to leave some blank rows between the different categories. This is crucial because we'll need the empty rows to separate each market share segment clearly. So for each market share, you will repeat the value in the helper table and use the blank rows as a buffer to separate the segments visually. Now enter 0% in each of these blank cells as a starting point. OK, I'll type 0% in cell J3 and paste it in each of the blank cells. Maybe I'll insert a border in my helper table. Yes, it's visually better now. To insert the horizontal axis values in the left blank column, we need to set a custom format for the column. So let's select the column area from I3 to I19. Press Ctrl-1 to open the Format Cells window. From the Number tab, select Custom. Set the custom format to zero, open double quotes, percent symbol, close double quotes, and press OK. The next step is to set the lower and upper axis values for each market. For example, North America has a market share of 20%, so the lower value will be zero and the upper value will be 20%. Let's type 0% inside cell I4, 
and 20% inside I6 cell. We just have to type the number 20. Excel will add the percentage after the number, like we set at the custom format. All right, this is the lower axis value, and this is the upper axis value. Now, for Europe, the lower value will be 20%, because we will start from the upper value of the previous market, so 20% here. Europe has a share of 35%, as you can see there. So you can guess which value is the upper axis value for Europe. Yes, it's 55%. 20% plus 35% equals 55%. We always calculate the cumulative percentage for each market. The first value will be the percentage share of the first segment, the second value will be the sum of the first and second segment values, and so on. This helps us build the chart from left to right, with each bar growing in width based on the percentage of the total. Now the share for Asia is 30%, so the lower value starts from 55%, and the upper value for Asia is 55 plus 30, so 85%. In the same way, the lower value for Australia is 85% and the upper is 100% because the share is 15%. The next step is to fill the axis values adjacent to the buffer rows. The value in these cells will be the same as the previous and the following axis values. So this is 0%. For cell I7, the value is 20%. For cell I11, the value is 55%. For cell I-15, the value is 85%, and for cell I-19, the value is 100%. With the data now organized, it's time to calculate the midpoint for each market segment. This is the point at which the label for each segment will be placed. Calculating the midpoint ensures that the labels appear at the center of each segment in the final chart, making the chart much easier to read. To find the midpoint, simply use a formula that calculates the average between the lower and upper bonds of each segment. Excel will then automatically calculate where the center of each segment should be. Let's find the midpoint value for North America. Add the following formula in cell I5. Equal parenthesis I4 plus I6. Close parenthesis divided by 2. Enter. The result is 10%. This is the first midpoint value for North America market. We will follow the same procedure to find the midpoints for the other markets. The fastest way is to copy cell I5 and paste it on cells I9, I13, and I17. So, the midpoint for Europe is 38%, for Asia 70%, and for Australia 93%. Finally, we will add two new columns, one for marker and one for the labels. In the Labels column, we will combine the market name with the share percentage to create clear and concise labels for each segment. So click on cell N2 and type Marker. Now on O2 and type Labels. In the Marker column, fill 100% in the midpoint rows. You can add the labels manually or use the following formula in O5 to get the label. Equal B3 ampersand symbol text open parentheses C3 comma double quotes parentheses hash symbol percentage symbol close the first parentheses double quotes close the second parentheses. Let's explain this formula. First, Excel grabs the value of cell B3. It could be text or a number. Then, the text function takes the value from cell C3 and formats it as a percentage. The hash symbol shows the number without extra zeros. For example, 25 instead of 25.0. The percentage adds the percentage sign after the number, and parentheses wrap the percentage for display. Finally, the ampersand joins or concatenates the values from B3 with the formatted percentage from C3. I will copy this formula and paste it in these cells. And I will modify the cell references to add labels for other midpoints.
let's add border in the help table and do some formatting. Now that we have our helper table set up, it's time to insert the chart itself. Highlight the cells I2 to N19. Go to the Insert tab. From the Insert line or Area Chart group, select the Stacked Area Chart. This chart type is the base for creating a MECO chart. Once you selected the Stacked Area Chart, Excel will generate a basic version of the chart. However, it's not quite a MECO chart yet, so we still need to make some adjustments. Now comes the fun part formatting the chart to look like a MECO chart. Select any of the upper triangle sections. Right click on your mouse, then select Change Series Chart Type. Start by selecting the marker series in the chart and changing the chart type to Line with Markers. This will help make the segments of your chart stand out more clearly. Press OK. Now it's time to add data labels. To do this, right click on the marker series and select Add Data Labels. This will display the market share for each segment, making it even easier to analyze the data at a glance. You can see all the data labels in the marker column. Right click on any of the data labels. Select Format Data Labels. The Format Data Labels window will open. Now from the Label Options, select Value from Cells. A new window named Data Label Range will appear where you have to select the label range. Select the data range from 03 to 019 and press OK. Uncheck the value box and set label position to above. Alright, you can see the changes immediately at the chart. The data labels are aligned above the chart with the proper labels. The next step is to hide the marker lines. Let's do it. Select the marker series and right click. Select Format Data Series. From the Fill in Lines section, select No Line. Now go to the marker section. Select None from the marker options. Nice. It's time to format horizontal and vertical axes. Right click on the horizontal axes and select Format Axis. Go to Axis Options and select Date Axis. As soon as you select the Date Axis, the chart will change into a MECO shape. Now change the major and minor units to 10 days. Right click on the vertical axis and select Format Axis. From the Axis Options, set the maximum bound as 1. Before inserting data labels into each of the regions, we will add an extra column into the helper table. Let's copy the company names and paste it there. I will first copy the percentages for North America and paste them starting from P5. I will do exactly the same for the other regions. These four rows will help us to add data labels for the different companies. As you can see in the chart, all the different colors represent series for different companies. Let's start with company D. Right click on the light blue color series. Select Add Data Labels. This will show all the data labels for Company D. It's a bit messy as you can see. Let's fix that. Right click on any of these data labels. Select Format Data Labels. The Format Data Labels window will open. From the Label Options, select Value from Cells. A new window named Data Label Range will appear where you have to select the label range. Select the data range S3 to S19. Uncheck the value. You can see the data labels for Company D are shown within the light blue chart area. Do the same for the other three companies starting with this green area, Company C.
The last step is to change the font of the data labels. Lastly, let's customize the chart's appearance. You can change the colors of the bars, adjust the font size for better readability, and even add outlines to make the chart look more polished. These final touches help make the chart visually appealing and easier to interpret. Right-click on the chart area, select Outline. From here, you can choose white as a suitable outline color. Also, I will choose a preferable outline weight. Let's delete the title. Good stuff. And there you have it. You've successfully created a MECO chart in Excel, and you can use it to analyze market share, business performance, and much more. With the MECO chart, you can easily compare data across different categories and get a clear visual representation of the proportions and contributions of each segment. It's a great tool for market analysts, business owners, and anyone looking to visualize complex data. Thank you for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more Excel tips and tutorials. And of course, hit the notification bell so you never miss an update from us. Have any questions or suggestions for future videos? Drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and happy charting.